You ready for this? Yep. You ready for the Christian walk? Yeah. You ready for the battle? Yeah. As we uh, continue in our study tonight, Ephesians chapter 6, a study on spiritual warfare, we're going to be moving on to the, the third point. We know that the, the first points we went was the, the just go to Ephesians 6. We, we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood enemies. We have to understand this in order to have peace down here in this world. Okay? We have to understand that God's not at war with us. And we're going to go to the, the third part of this. Is all right, The second is the body armor of God's righteousness, right? God puts his righteousness in us. We're righteous before God. <coughs> Saved and forgiven. Heaven's our home guarantee. He gives us his righteousness so we can live out that righteousness here. Amen? Yep. And do the right thing while we're here. He, gives us, he empowers us. This is something we have to put on every day. The truth, the truth of God's word. This is truth. Everything out there is a deception. The world system is a deception. We have to understand we're going into enemy territories every day. So we have to get up and we have to prepare ourselves for that part of the battle. We know we're going into enemy territory. So we have to go with the truth of God's word. And the righteousness, that part two. And it tells us in Ephesians 6.15, For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. Ephesians 6, verse 15. Now, or for shoes, put on the readiness to preach the good news of the peace with God. Go with me to Romans chapter 5. Okay? We have to understand that we have peace with God. This is a big, big under... We have to understand this as we go through this battle of spiritual warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood enemies. How was your day today? How did it go? Was there any kind of battles going on? Not only outwardly, but inwardly. In our mind. See, we have a war going on. And the battlefield's in our mind. We have to understand that God is not at war with us. No matter what our sinful nature's telling us, or what the devil's trying to tell us, or what the world's trying to tell us, we have to understand, look at verse 1 of Romans 5. This is so important. We have to put this on. Is our shoes. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have what? peace with God. Listen, God is not at war with you. But I know someone who is. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. So whenever that war is going on inside you, God's not the one giving, not at war with you. He had, you have peace with God because of what Jesus did for you. Not what you did for him, it's what he did for you. So God's not at war with us. We have to understand that. We have to walk that out. Now look what it says. Look at verse 2. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. We don't deserve it. It's a gift. Look, where we now stand and confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Listen, God did for us what we could never do for ourselves. God is not at war with us anymore. We are at war with us. See, we have to understand that a lot of people blame the devil. At war. No, our flesh is at war with us. We are at war with ourselves. That's a fact. You can blame the devil all you want. The devil doesn't make you do anything. He might tempt you, but the war is in your own mind. We have to understand that we have a new heart. We have the very heart of God beating in our bodies. Thank you, Jesus. And what a relief that is, right? But we also have this other nature. That's at war with us. Now this is, I just want to, I just want to, look what it says in verse 3 though. If you can understand that principle, it says in verse 3, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Mm -hmm. Now, how in the flesh 
can you rejoice when you come into problems and trials? You can't. Your flesh gets mad when you come into problems and trials, and we get weary, and we talk, and we say things, and we cuss, and we curse. We can't. Look what it says. If you understand, if you have all the body armor on when you go out into that world, you can rejoice no matter what's going on. Because you know you're going into a battlefield. God's not at war with me. The devil is, and so am I. I'm at war with my new nature. So are you. You realize that? Your sinful nature is at war with your new nature, and you can blame the devil all you want. It says in James that it comes from our own desires that war against the spirit. We have to understand, always blaming the devil, that's not correct. You can look in the mirror and say, it's me. I'm warring against what the Word of God says. I am going against it. I want to do things my way. We have to understand this principle. So listen what it says. For we know that they help us develop endurance. Did anybody go through anything today? Up here? God's using it. Look what it says. It's, they, they, we know that they help us. Do you know that it's helping? Look, do you know that it's helping you to develop endurance? Or are you getting bitter? Are you understanding the spiritual principle that you're going to run into problems and trials? That it's trying to, God's trying to help us to develop endurance through them trials? That's a spiritual principle. A fleshly principle would be, no way, I ain't taking it. Nope. I don't want to run into problems and trials. I'm going to fight back. Now look what it says. We have to handle things the right way. If you want to experience the peace of God, well, we have to understand the principles of God. And we have to understand His Word. He's using it to develop my character. Oh, I, did anybody go through anything today? No, really. I mean, think about the way you reacted today. In your flesh, you probably failed miserably. Even if you didn't come out with Lee and say it, but in your mind, you know, I said a few things in my mind today that I shouldn't know. <laughs> Especially when I got stuck behind somebody when I was trying to get something. <laughs> but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say anything out of my mouth, but it was in my mind. I said it. It's like, big deal. So what if they come out of my mouth? God, God, it doesn't matter to God whether it comes out of your mouth or it's in your mind. It's still bad. You see, we think, well, because I didn't say it, I'm not so bad. But I thought about it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, wow. I'm going to get to take that test tomorrow. And think towards a what? Peace. All right, Lord, that was helped to develop my character and endurance. Not just outwardly, but inwardly. See, we can pretty much get hold of the outward stuff to make, you know, safe face and look good in church faces and everything like that. But it's very hard for us to get hold of the thought process. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. That's the spiritual warfare we're talking about. So we can fake out a lot of people here in the world, but we know what's going on in our own minds, right? Yeah. And guess who else does? God. God. I'm like, Lord, thank you for giving me Jesus as my advocate and having mercy on me because I don't have any mercy on myself at times. Amen. I beat myself up in my spirit. Now think about this. I'm not talking about beating myself up outwardly. I'm talking about beating myself up inwardly, saying, God gave me a new life. Why am I thinking like that? And all of a sudden, now I'm having this struggle that's going on inside me. But it starts to make me miserable inwardly. And when that happens, it's eventually going to come out. You might be able to contain it for a period of time, but that misery is going to show up somewhere. And when you least expect it to, the lid's going to come off the pressure cooker when somebody drops something or some real little irritant comes into you, you get the whole rat that you've been holding on to. We have to understand this warfare. It's like we, we, we put these stuff in the banks of our mind. And we don't let them go. The Bible says when you wake up every morning as if everybody never did anything to you ever. Clean slate. That's spiritual growth. Not holding up anything against anybody. No ill will. Not hoping God judges them. Not saying, oh, they need to go to church and all this other crap. It's to understand that 
I'm forgiven every day, and so are they. I have to be like Jesus and forgive them so I can have the peace of God dwelling within my spirit. This is spiritual warfare. People think that this is because I'm doing good outwardly. doesn't mean you're not battling inwardly. The heck with the outward stuff. That's easy. Going to make money, get a job, do these things. That's easy. It's getting hold of these inward thoughts that control and dominate us at times. This is what the spiritual warfare is all about. Mm -hmm. Because eventually what's going on in your heart comes out. Mm -hmm. And then you get some Christian you are, right? Because you have never dealt what's going on inwardly and put on all the armor. So, well, I know the Bible. Yeah, you know the Bible, but you don't have, you don't have the Bible in your heart. You have it in your mind. Mm -hmm. You got it up here, but you ain't got it in your heart. Look, when you got to walk this out, you're going to put the peace of God on. Look, all right, now look what it says. Look at verse 4. And endurance develops what? Strength of character. That means if you're honest with yourself, say, my character is defective and weak. If you think that you have something within yourself saying, I'm good, I'm better than other people, that's pride. That's a weakness, that's a defect, defect in character. He's, he's helping us develop what? Look what it says. It's helping us strengthen our, our character. Endurance develops strength of character, not doesn't take, it doesn't bring out our character, it develops strength of character. We have to understand, like, you know what? I don't know how many times I'm going to get stuck behind somebody <laughs> when I need to get somewhere. If I don't make peace with that, I'll never have peace here, because that's always going to happen. Yeah. I have to accept it and say, God's putting it there. Hallelujah. Get your foot off the gas, John. <laughs> and get your mind off what's going on in front of you. And put your mind on what the book says. He's trying to develop my character. Boy, I'm stubborn at times. <laughs> see, I can just say that because it's the truth. It doesn't matter to me whether you see... I hope you see flaws in my character because that's why I need Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to say it. A lot of Christians are. But that only, you know, your only sick is your secrets. And you have to live with yourself every day. There's no peace in that. All I know is this. I need a savior for myself. I was blaming the devil for everything at one point in my Christian walk. And that took the focus right off of me. That's justifying it. No, well, the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. No, it's you. God's saying, no, it ain't the devil. It's you. You have a problem I'm your solution, and the result is a miracle. When you could actually see that, boy, it took a while for me to see it was me. The devil knows how to play out that temptation, but it's really me. The devil doesn't make us do anything. He tempts us to do it. Our flesh carries out the task. Now look what it says. And in character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. Listen, he's never going to leave us no for we know how dearly God loves us. Do you really know how dearly God loves you? That's one thing you have to really understand. The depth of his love. It's so hard for us to grasp. Even when we're doing the wrong thing, we have to see the depth of his love in it. So we can still have peace in that storm. The depth of his love when I'm living for myself. The depth of his love when I'm going against him. The depth of his love when, he, when I'm the one trying to put a nail in his hand. Mm. There's a beautiful picture of one of the songs. I always see it and it, it's just, it blows my mind when I re see it. It's Jesus holding up the guy that's putting the nail in his hand. Telling him he loves him. Whether you think it or not, we all put the nails in his hand. And he still loves us. Everybody tells us, yeah, I love Jesus, and go about doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. That's like putting a nail in his hand. He said, I died to give you my life, to give up your life, and I'm going to give you my life in return. That's, that's, that's like a mind-blowing... See, people can't understand the things of the Spirit because they're walking in the flesh. The Bible is all spiritual. It's so easy, the flesh, 
It's so easy to say, well, I'm doing so good. But in your mind, there's a what? war going on. You can tell everybody you're doing good. Put on the smile, church face, and everything else. But you know that you're not at peace. You know you're not at peace. So you can take the church face off here, because I know I'm the same way. Okay, but I'm finding that peace because I'm sick of not having it. I want the peace. I want I, now that I have peace with God, I want to experience the peace of God in my life today. What good is having it and not experiencing it? And going out there cussing and doing your own thing and complaining and griping and thinking all you're doing is talking about what's going on in the world and just not focusing on Christ and saying, I'm not putting my trust in Jesus. I'm putting my trust in what people are doing out there. Nonsense. Nonsense. Instead of saying, hey, you know what? God's in control. I'm going to have peace even though it's all hell breaking loose out there and I'm going to keep my nose out of it and give it to God. So I can experience the promised land now. Griping and complaining. Is that peaceful? Yeah. I don't know about who. It says right here. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us what? The Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Look, he's given us the Holy Spirit. You think it's the Holy Spirit making you gripe and complain out there about everything that's going on with taxes and presidents and people and this and that? That's not the Holy Spirit. That's your spirit warring against what's going on. That's not God. That's not of God. He's a God of peace, not of war. Are you a peacemaker or are you a peace taker? By what? What comes out of your mouth? Are you experiencing God's peace? Now look what it says. Look at verse 6. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us. Now look what it says. This is, this is the unbelievable. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person or somebody that's doing the right thing. Though some might perhaps be willing to die for a person who was especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Yes. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, all of us have the blood of Jesus flowing to our veins. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving us your righteousness. Help me to experience that righteousness by living right here and have peace. Because let me tell you something as a believer. Don't think that your sins are going to give you peace because you think that God saved me and I'm going to heaven so I can just sin it up here and it doesn't matter. Oh, it matters. Don't think you won't have any peace. You remember King David? He was awesome, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And he wasn't totally living in sin, but the sins that he committed... Look at his life, what happened because of it. God forgave him. Yeah, heaven was his hand. He never escaped the consequences, though. He had a mess for a family. Think about what happened because of that sin. Mm -hmm. So don't think that your sins are going to get you by again. You're going to have peace and God's always with me. What a bunch of nonsense. Christians go for that crap. You are going to suffer here for your sins because God knows that I gave you my righteousness and you can do the right thing. You're choosing not to. Your flesh is taking over and you're saying, I love Jesus. You're a liar. Mm -hmm. You love your flesh. Whew. The Bible is real, you know. And we're going to teach the real stuff here. Whether you like to hear it or not, God, I'm accountable to God. Do you want peace in this life? Yes. Yes. Well, you've got to live right. <laughs> and guess who gives you the power to live right? The Holy Spirit, exactly. So you can experience that peace here. Now listen, while we're, while we're at this, this, I'm not going to get off this for a little bit because this is really important. Go with me to um, John 14. <coughs> I don't know about you. I had a hard day at work today. Everything went wrong. It was just one of them bad work days. Everything went wrong. Everything that could went wrong did. I said, you know what? 
I'm not going to buy into that. I'm not going to let it make me miserable and weary and tired. Because let me tell you something, as soon as I got here, I got plugged in. <laughs> I said, the heck with all that nonsense of the world. Yeah, I'm tired, I'm weak. But I'll tell you what, my spirit is energized because I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm not going to gripe and complain because let me tell you something. I'm, if, I can, if I can understand it, I should expect it. And I'll tell you, I used to get weary and run down. I'm saying, I can't do this. And God's saying, I know you can't. That's why I'm, that's why I'm here. I know you can't do it. I'm going to help you keep your mouth shut and do it. For my glory, not yours. Yeah. Boy, I need that spiritual zipper. <laughs> <laughs> because if you give me a fleshly zipper, it ain't going to work. Because eventually the flesh is going to come back out as soon as you want to zip it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about here? Mm -hmm. Look what it says. Jesus said something so profound here. In verse 27 of John. 14. He said, I'm leaving you with a gift. Do you realize that his peace is not something that we earn? It's, his peace is a gift. It's a gift. Look, I'm leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. Peace of mind and heart. Don't, wouldn't you just love to have peace to, up here? You know, when you could just let me get back in this chair. All right, today I got up, I had a flat tire. The cat tried to scratch me. Um, I got stuck in traffic. I ran out of gas. Um, forgot you name it. I forgot, I forgot to pray. I forgot to ask God for help this morning. Just because I forgot to ask him doesn't mean he's not with me. No. Thank you, Jesus, right? He intercedes. Even when we don't know what to pray for, his spirit intercedes for us. So I understand. Like, I don't have to feel guilty. Oh, no, I had a bad day because I didn't pray this morning. <laughs> no, you had a bad day because that's the way life goes. Mm. And God's using it to train you. I ain't getting up. I'm going to sit here. <laughs> so, whether you think it was a bad day or not, it really wasn't. Your flesh might have thought it was a bad day, because we have an enemy that wars against our spirit, saying, you don't deserve that. You deserve to have everything you want down here. Where did Jesus, where did Jesus have? He had nowhere to even sleep. Oh, God provides for me every day. He provides troubles. <laughs> he provides my family. He provides work. He provides it all. And it's all intertwined to do something very spectacular in me. Make me like his son. That's what it's all designed to do. If I can accept that when I go out in the world, I have all my armor on. I'm going out in this world today, and God's going to make me like Jesus through every event in the course of my hate in life. All my armor is on. How often do we forget that as soon as we walk out the door? Because 